Yo, have you heard about Anchor? It's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Wrestling Edition. Today, we have our first wrestling episode of 2021, and we have the wrestling expert, Jacob Mason, with us. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm fantastic. I'm pumped up, ready for a good show. Hey, all same here, man. Same here. And since it's the first wrestling podcast of 2021, just want to wish all of our wrestling fans Happy New Year. Hope everyone had a good holiday season. Did you have a good holiday season, man? That was wonderful. It, it, it was good. Can't complain. I was I was off work, so that was nice. And that's, that's always the best stuff. But yeah, we got a lot to get into on this first one of 2021. We're going to be going over Wrestle Kingdom. We're going to be talking about some big news that came out a couple of days ago of New Japan Pro Wrestling coming to American television. We're going to be talking about, obviously, uh, Birdie Lee. We're also going to be talking about Goldberg because he showed up on the first Raw of 2021. And then we're just going to give our best of 2020s. We're going to give our favorite segment, our favorite face, heel, newcomer, best all-around wrestler, uh, favorite moment of 2020, favorite match, who needs a big 2021. And then I will throw in uh, worse worst moment of 2021 because we can't just always have the good stuff when you're a wrestling fan you always try and be negative so we do got to have some worst moments on there but man let's just get right into it jacob wrestle kingdom just concluded the two night uh extravaganza can you first can you explain to the listeners why wrestle kingdom is two nights um i think it's just the way new japan has always done it Mm -hmm. um which WWE copied that style last year for WrestleMania. Yep. But uh, yeah, for those who do not know, Wrestle Kingdom is the WrestleMania of Japan. Mm-hmm. It's massive. Um, they were the only, well, I wouldn't say the only wrestling promotion, but they had in Japan, what was it like 20,000 people like in the Tokyo Dome? They were to have each night there. So kudos to them. And they kept everybody separated. And um, the one thing they couldn't do, they couldn't cheer. They couldn't do anything like with their mouth. They couldn't yell, couldn't boo, couldn't do anything. They could only uh, clap or stomp their feet. That was like one of the things, like if you bought a ticket, that was one of the things you had to agree to, which, you know, whatever. Hey, they made it work. People got to see an awesome Wrestle Kingdom. A lot of crazy stuff happened out of that. Right. Agreed. And I, with 20,000 people, too. Uh, COVID time, that's probably the biggest live audience any wrestling show has had since COVID started. Yes. So with that, I'm wondering if the people in the States with their big events, obviously, it's January, Royal Rumble, Road to WrestleMania, if they're going to try and do something similar, seeing that it was able to be done in Japan, as long as you space everyone, everyone out. But we'll wait to see on that. But let's let's start a little bit on day one. I mean, it's a lot, so we won't go over completely everything. I just want to hit on some real important stuff with you. Just for the American viewers, you guys know this guy, John Moxley, formerly known as Dean Ambrose. He pulled up to Wrestle Kingdom and sent a warning to Kenta. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So John Moxley is the United States champion for New Japan. And John Moxley is absolutely cursed when it comes to the any United States championship because he never defends it. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Never defends it. Um, of course, COVID had a lot to do with that this year 
or last year or this season, whatever. Uh, but Kenta has the, he's the number one contender. He has the briefcase for the right to challenge for that. And Kenta has been just cutting promos left and right every time, calling out Moxley, where are you at? You know, blah, 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 blah. I'm the real guy, all this stuff. And he's been doing just wonderful stuff. And Moxley came out and said, you know, whoever wins this match between it was Kenta and I forget who the other guy was. We all knew Kenta was going to go over. Um, it was that he, they're going to face Moxley. Uh, Sasuke Kojima. Yeah, I didn't even. It wasn't even a question. Like, was was uh, was Kenta going to go over? I mean, it, absolutely, he was. Mm-hmm. He's killing it in New Japan right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he, yeah, like you said, to retain the IWGP US Title Shot contract, which I think was kind of cool. Having a big match for a title shot at the U.S. title. You couldn't even bring that up in America. Like, oh, let's have a title contract match for the Intercontinental title. Like, that wouldn't happen. So that that was really super, super cool. Another match that I actually uh, got to watch a little bit of because I was trying to get some stuff for this was my man Okada uh, defeat, defeating Will Osprey in one-on-one action. And I, I just love Okada. Like, there was a time where I really thought he was the best wrestler on planet Earth. I think it was about 2016 to 18 range. So anytime I get to actually watch him and see him win, brings a brings a smile to the to the mark in me. <laughs> yeah, um, that was from what because I have yet to watch them yet because mm-hmm. they start off at our time at like 4:30 in the morning. Yeah. I'm yeah. sleeping. I got to work the next day. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm too old to do an all nighter than go to work and do a eight hour shift. It just it's not happening. So I I caught all the results. So I'll probably catch the matches this weekend. But from everything I've seen, that match was match of the night for night one for New Japan. Right. You also had because uh, you're, you're high on them. The Gorillas of Destiny. Yes, I am. Honga defeated. Uh... Zack Sable Jr. and Taichi to win the heavyweight tag titles. This was on night one. You had Kota Ishibi defeating Tetsuya Nato to win the heavyweight championship and the Intercontinental Championship. So double champ action there. With go back, I'm gonna go back to your Gorillas Destiny. You're super high on them. Do you ever see them coming back to the states? No, no. No, the only stuff they're going to do in the States is uh, Ring of Honor stuff. And that's that's going to be it. Tomatonga is uh, he's a lifer there. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was one of the he's one of the OGs of Bullet Club. Um, New Japan takes care of him. He loves that company. He's uh, I, I think he's going to stay there. And I hope he does because he can pretty much do whatever he wants to do over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, just to go to night two, because we're looking at these results, and they're not super surprising, but the biggest match, I mean, it's your guy, Jay White versus Coda, that, they, they stole the entire weekend, and Jay White is still continuing to steal wrestling headlines this early in 2021, and Jacob, I know you're, you've been following these headlines left and right, you've been keeping me in the loop on what's going on with, well, one with the match, and what's going on post-match with Jay White? All right, so the Jay White and Kota Ibushi match, um, it was the longest match in Wrestle Kingdom history. It went 48 minutes and five seconds, which was, you know, which is massive. Mm -hmm. Um, Both these guys are just beat the hell out of each other. Kota Ibushi ends up winning as much as I wanted Jay White to win. It didn't shock me that Kota won. Kota is like the Daniel Bryan of New Japan. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves him. He's just... A great wrestler, a great guy. Just, you know, but whatever. Like I said, I've said in the past, I'm a, I like the heels. Jay White's a heel. He's Bullet Club. I'm a mark for Bullet Club. It is what it is. But Jay White is a freaking legend. He solidified him himself. Both during the match, which, like I said, they beat the hell out of each other. But after the match, they have their press conferences, which are always just as entertaining as the actual match itself. So Jay White cuts a 10 minute promo in the back 
and basically says, I'll, I will do New Year's Dash, which was uh, on the f- sixth. I will do New Year's Dash. And after that, I am done. I'm done. I, he, well, if you follow my Instagram, we'll, I'll have a link up there for the entire promo that he cut. But he said, I'm done. If I'm not appreciated here, I'll go somewhere else that I am. I It is what it is, essentially. So him losing Wrestle Kingdom, after, or him losing the main event at night two of Wrestle Kingdom, goes and has a press conference, has talked more about than the winner of the main event of Wrestle Kingdom. What a freaking legend right there. That was awesome. So this morning, first thing I did when I woke up, Checking all like all right, what's happening on New Year's Dash? What's happening? And Jay White got pinned uh in the tag match that he was in. He was the one he got pinned by Ishii. So after the match, Bullet Club like took him back. He did not have a press conference, he had nothing. So we don't the world does not know right now whether he is a legitimate free agent and he's done his contracts up, or if he's just trolling all of us either way the entire world is talking about jay white right now yeah de- definitely especially if he's a free agent because i know when me and you talking I, it was it isn't the same situation but i kind of similar to when aj Styles left uh nobody well nobody knew he was coming to wwe that was the biggest left field thing ever and he showed up as a third person in the 2016 world rumble and shocked the entire world and I was just like, hmm, well, Jay White, Royal Rumble 2020 confirmed it. Did Triple H pull another magical rabbit out of the hat and get Jay White to come over to the States? And I'm even just, yeah, and getting Jay White. And I was also saying that he brought up how it's the longest match in the, uh, at Wrestle Kingdom. It's also the longest match in Tokyo Dome history. Which that's wild. And to go off of, Jay White's the one taking the headlines, and rightfully so. But now you have Coda with two titles, and then you have Kenny Omega with a title, an AEW title belt. And now, because we talked about that last time, he can always go get the Impact World title. Can we do titles for titles, those two on two, two titles each? Oh, if it, it, I, anything can happen. It's it's 2021. Anything's possible at this point. If if they could do that, that means AEW Impact and New Japan have a working relationship. Mm-hmm. At that point, you might as well hurry up and get Ring of Honor in on it too, and you're going to have all these different companies all teaming together, which would just be the most magical wrestling moment of all time. Yeah, and, we, and ever since Kenny Omega said he was showing up to impact when he won that title and he did everything is wide open and that was the end of the year so now we have a whole year of some of this stuff anything's wide open and just to lead into that uh new japan pro wrestling is coming to the american tv jacob what so yeah uh this was another big thing they talked about during they they announced during wrestle kingdom uh new japan is going to be coming to american tv but I have nobody knows what the what station it's going to be, what time it's going to be. Is it going to be something during prime time? Is it going to be something that's at two in the morning, like Ring of Honor is? You know, nobody knows, but we know it's coming to American television. One, that's it's freaking huge. That's huge. It's massive. Oh. So. I, I have no idea. Do you think they'll be in a prime time sp- spot? Do you think it'll be like an off time, like an early morning, late morning type deal thing? I mean, like who? I have no idea. Well, you, if we look at the landscape right now, uh, WWE Monday Night Raw is on Monday, obviously. Um, NXT and AEW are both Wednesday at 8, so I pray to God they don't do Wednesday. Or that's just going to give me a huge headache. Yeah, Friday. Impact's on Tuesday. Impact is on Tuesday. Friday Night SmackDown's on Friday. Ring of Honor is usually at mid. Is it at midnight? 
Um, yeah, it's at a weird time. I, when I watch Ring of Honor, I catch it on Fight TV. Okay. That's always the easiest for me to catch the episodes. Yeah, because if I remember on Fox, they're usually super late, like 11, 12 at night. So yeah, I think if you want to if you want to get a day of prime time, that Thursday slot could be appealing. Oh yeah, very. I mean you you're not running against anyone and you're gonna get the the marks and hopefully you know you get you get this new crowd and to watch your your product yeah definitely you'll definitely because if it's a thursday let's say at eight o'clock and it's a two-hour show and it's on a tv network that you don't have to call your cable provider for it could be a real big thing just anyone who likes love wrestling like myself is like oh wrestling on there's nothing else on tv let me click on and see it's on at eight o'clock it's done by 10 i can still do some things before I go to sleep. I think that'd be the perfect time slot to introduce themselves to the American public. They can't do something like 12 a.m., 3 a.m., and then expect someone to stay up and watch it. They got to put it at that night, that 8 o'clock hour. Hell, if they could get it on like at a 6 p.m., because there's really no wrestling on Thursdays, especially with no live shows or anything like that. I think Thursday would be the perfect day for them. And then TV station. I guess it depends on who they're going to be working with. If they really have this work relationship with AW and Ring of Honor and just TNT try and get them, but depending on the season, because they have basketball, or do they try and get on a local station or a local station gets in that, or like you said, a fight TV, something like that, or USA. I mean, USA, they just run reruns of NCIS. So if you can get them on a Thursday, a new live product, get the more hardcore fans watching, I think that could do it. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't see them going on USA because I don't see Vince being like cool with USA putting another wrestling show on the same channel that they do. Even if even if it'd be on a different day, it wouldn't affect them at all. Vince ain't going to want that because we can look back years ago when Vince tried getting the Madison Square Garden to not let the G1 uh, super card happen at Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I I would hope it would be on not a local channel. I would hope it would be on something bigger. Like, I want to say Spike TV, but that's not around anymore. It could be, what is it, the Paramount channel now or whatnot. Um, just something along those lines would work. I don't know, though. But all I know is New Japan's coming to American TV. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be wild. Hopefully. And I guess with the USA thing, too, they could really tell Vince, be like, look, it's happening on Thursday. Get over it. You're not bringing the ratings on Raw that we want, so we're going to get someone else, too, to even it out. But something with the ratings, too, that you brought up, that ratings have been terrible on Raw recently. They'll pick up now that it's Rumble season. But they made a profit of what? Would you say forty-eight million? Uh, so from everything that I heard, uh, the last two quarters um, in WWE stock, they made a forty-eight million dollar profit. WWE absolutely killed it in the COVID era, you could say. But the thing is, how like it is crazy because like how is that like ratings are down, and this isn't the first time this has happened. Ratings have been down, and they've made a whole bunch of money, but. With like live fans, things like that, but no fans. The Thunderdome, I don't know what if they own that or if they're paying rent to whoever owns it. And they made forty-eight million dollars. That in profit. That is crazy. And that's also something thinking like how much of that goes into what they did beginning of COVID, cutting those people. Because of cutting those people and plus this, it looks like they were right and they knew what they were doing from that financial side. Right. I, I I don't know how they're doing it, but however they're doing it, Vince is happy. Yeah, but the problem with that is that they're making all this money and then they only change the product when they get outraged, but not making money. And they always get the outrage, especially these past couple of weeks. But they're now they're making the money, so it's like a big middle finger to to the hardcores like, hey, you guys are bitching about us, but <laughs> we got the money rolling in and someone who is going to bring a lot of bitching 
from the <laughs> wrestling community is one the legend Bill Goldberg, who actually I actually really liked when he was really Goldberg, not Goldberg, but <laughs> he just beat people up and left. But Goldberg surprisingly came back on the first Raw of 2021. It was Raw Legends Night, but to us, me and you, Jacob, we know that is we need ratings night, so we're going to call a whole bunch of old people to get the older fans to watch because they remember watching them as kids. That's what Legends Night is always. So you had Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, all of them. And in the main event of Drew versus Keith Lee, which was a good match, Drew obviously won, and Goldberg came out, and he just walked up, said a couple words, challenged Drew McIntyre for the title at the Royal Rumble, and then Drew said, wrestling, you'd be like wrestling my dad. And I was like, well, that's probably, he's probably the same age as your dad. And then Goldberg, <laughs> Goldberg pushed him, and that was that. And to be honest, Jacob, one, I was shocked Bill Goldberg came back. And two, that he's wrestling Drew for the title at Royal Rumble. Yeah. So the one, I have so many issues with this mm -hmm. entire situation. I hate this just as much as you do and everyone else. But one of the, the biggest issue I had is that the WWE obviously thinks that we are complete idiots mm -hmm. and we have the world's shortest attention span. Mm -hmm. So, because one of the things that Goldberg said when he came out is you don't respect the legends. Now, if we rewind a short three months ago, it was Drew sticking up for all of the legends when Randy Orton was just RKOing and punt kicking everyone out of the arena. Yeah. And Drew, Drew was the Drew was the savior. Yep. But somehow Drew doesn't respect the legends. We can also go earlier into the show where you have Hulk Hogan just saying, like, oh, you remind me of a younger me, brother. I hope not. I don't need Drew McIntyre to be. <laughs> but you, you can see where Hogan's like trying to not necessarily pa like pass the torch but give like a good nod give the good olive branch to Drew McIntyre because he's a genuinely good guy and you know obviously respects the legends yeah. but then Bill Goldberg out of freaking nowhere you don't respect the legends you're next like the what? Why? None of this makes any sense. Well, None of it. It wouldn't be the first time and it won't be the last that they forget about the people who actually watch their stuff besides even the casuals have a good remembrance of what happened on your show three hours before that main event and three months ago as you said. And I honestly just thought they didn't have any lines for him to get into a match. It'll be weird to see those promos. I was more shocked on the fact that this, he's the, well, that he just came out, asked for a title shot, and he's going to get it, which is crazy. So I was honestly thinking about who is Drew going to wrestle at the Royal Rumble, and here comes Goldberg. And I know that you know the friend group I have here, we do all the, we do sheets for the big matches, and when I'm going to be looking at that match, the bad thing is, as old as Goldberg is, I honestly think the match is a toss about Goldberg might win. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it very well could happen. I would hope it would not happen. The last person to beat Goldberg was Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman has since then been not completely buried, but has been pretty much thrown to the side. So if Goldberg wins, that means in my book, it makes it look like Drew is now officially weaker than Braun Strowman. Mm -hmm. Drew's the champion on your flagship show. Yep. None of this, I mean, none of this adds up. Like, I, I, I'll I, say my bold prediction now, I think Drew goes over. I think he has to go over. I think if Goldberg goes over, like, you're going to hear me rage on the After Rumble podcast that we'll do. I will straight up rage. I'll even take the memory thing a step, a step further. Just a couple of weeks ago, Goldberg and Roman Reigns were going at it on social media, saying that he's not done with Roman Reigns yet. So I thought it was going to be going that way again, because that was supposed to be um, a main event at WrestleMania 36. It was supposed to be Goldberg, Roman Reigns, because Goldberg was champ. 
Roman Reigns came out and said he was next. That was probably going to be the main event that Roman Reigns, but Roman Reigns backed out because of COVID. That's the reason Braun Strowman got the rub. If Roman didn't back up, Braun didn't get the rub. So three weeks ago, and Goldberg was on the jump saying he's coming to whoop Roman's ass. But then three weeks later, you go to the opposite show, challenge the opposite champion who hasn't said anything to you, and you challenge him for the belt. And when the people listen and say, oh, there's no way Goldberg's going to win. Guys, no, everyone said that when he smacked the fiend in Saudi Arabia and basically ended him for a while. He did the same thing to Kevin Owens, too, when Kevin Owens had the title. So there's a precedent that this has happened recently in the past couple of years. And The Fiend was just two years oh, yeah. ago. No, two years. Last year. And that's how Goldberg got the belt. So, yeah, last year. So there is a press, like, and we don't know. And that's the biggest thing, too, which is why it's my favorite paper. We don't know who's winning the Rumble. Because they could do something like Goldberg becomes champ, and then that Rumble winner wins, and they take out Goldberg. So we don't know what's happening. Yeah, and even on paper, the the match makes absolutely it makes more sense if Goldberg went after Roman mm-hmm. because yeah. you you have the legend Goldberg, the the old gunslinger, um, as Paul Heyman likes to call him. You have him who's obviously face going after the heel Roman Reigns and his his yard and tribal chief and blah 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 all that jazz. Looking on paper. Goldberg versus Drew McIntyre. So according to what Goldberg said, Drew should be heel because he doesn't respect the legends, you know, but he wasn't in the back, you know, talking smack about big show. And he wasn't back there talking smack about Mark Henry and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, he was, that was Randy Orton. But somehow Drew does not respect the freaking legends. So who's heel, who's face? There's this blurred line, which there's no, it's not even a good blurred no. line. It's not even no. a vigilante. It's not an anti hero type deal thing. It's just senile old man versus Drew McIntyre. Yeah. That, and if, who's the, the face? Right. And I would expect Drew to, actually, I can't even say that. It, like I said earlier, it's toss up. But if Drew wins, I guess there's more to add on his resume that in his title reigns, he's beaten Brock Lesnar, he's beaten Goldberg, and he's beaten Randy Orton. So to keep him strong going forward, I like that. But I don't know if he's going to win. Like, I'm going to look at that sheet when I'm look, when we're looking at the match card, and I don't know. I really don't. And it depends on maybe on who wins that Rumble, if someone's coming back. But we're going to have to see, man. It was very... WWE did what they wanted to do to start the new year. They got us talking about Raw, the first Raw of 2021, with the crazy appearance of Goldberg. And and I don't know if he's going to be doing the promos every week, if he's going to be showing up, doing it via satellite. Typically, it's crazy because right now, as of this moment, to our knowledge, Brock Lesnar is still a free agent. So typically what Goldberg's doing would have been the Brock Lesnar spot. But Brock Lesnar is significantly more athletic and in better shape than Bill right now and more dominant. So the him gone, I guess they just used Goldberg and Taker's gone. So it, it's very interesting, man. Oh, yeah. It's, it's nuts. But other thing, before we go into our best of uh, 2020, since we didn't get a chance to do it in the end of the year of 2020, our condolences. Luke Harper, Brody Lee's family. Obviously, everyone's heard the news by now that he tragically passed away at the age of 41 due to a lung problem that us, our, us fans, we did not know until it was disclosed by his wife on social media. There's been a whole bunch of tributes. Even WWE did the stuff they do at the beginning of this uh, episode with the rest in peace. And there was wrestlers who had his armband, doing some of his moves. AEW dedicated a whole show to him, which was fantastic. WWE is doing the best of Luke Harper stuff. And my biggest thing with this Jacob is you never know how much, how many people someone touches till they're gone. Because to be honest, I did not know Brody Lee was this well liked in the entire 
wrestling community. Everyone has said something about his passing. Yeah, everyone everyone has this. Man, out of all the wrestling deaths that we dealt with over 2020. Yes, and it's been a lot. Yeah, it has been. Um, this one hit the hardest for for me. Mm-hmm. Th- this this one s- it, it sucked. Yeah, I mean, I a lot of you know a lot of the listeners know. Like, I I'm a big Bray Wyatt fan. I love the Wyatt family when they first started out in NXT. I seen uh, Luke Harper, I think two or three times wrestle um, between live shows, Raws and SmackDowns and all that. He was always consistent. Yeah, always. Um, I mean, even before like he passed away, I never heard anyone say anything bad or said like, oh, I don't want to work with this guy. I mean, th- you never heard anything negative about the guy even before he passed away. Um, man, after the the out the outpour of love that the wrestling community has for someone. Uh, that that was special. Both, I mean, AEW, like you said, they did an entire tribute show. Um, and they're off. Then they they gave his son, negative one, as they call him, yep. uh, a contract. You know, both of these companies are going to take care of that family. No. They're not going to have to want for anything. Which is, I mean, for for all the stuff that just AEW's done. Man, it just speaks volumes of how much they care about their talent mm-hmm. and all their employees. And it just sets, you know, for this new company to, I mean, they retired the TNT championship, the current one. They're redoing one. That is Brody's title. Um, that That's his. They, they're going to do a new one. Uh, they gave the old championship to his son. You know, that, that stuff's awesome. I mean, just how much they care. You know, what's your thoughts, buddy? Yeah, this this did hit really hard because it was unexpected. He was 41. He was doing really well. And it's, again, it's the age-old thing that you never know what someone's going through until it's too late. Like, all his years, WWE, all that stuff, no one knew. Like, we didn't know. It was never reported out to us, the casuals, that had a lung, a lung problem. And it, it's one of the top two for me that, or, and this isn't a ranking of what hurt me personally, but the most, but that one's definitely one of the top two. The other one, obviously, is when Shad died saving his son. Like that, 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 that one's always gonna, that one's always gonna hurt because I mean, as obviously as a parent, he, he did what he had to do to save his child at the cost of his life. So, and then obviously, what we had the podcast with Pat Patterson died, we lost a lot of people in the wrestling world in 2020, and it really sucks. Oh yeah, and hopefully, 2021 is kinder to our wrestling family out there. We, the tributes, the tributes, and the tribute videos, and all the Instagram posts from even people who haven't been in wrestling for a while. Cena said something like, "They're they're always fantastic, but I'm pretty sure everyone would rather not have them because we don't want to lose these people." So. That's just my thoughts on that. And then with AEW, like I said, that's gonna that wasn't their goal, but that's gonna attract more talent to AEW because that just shows that they care. Yes. And that's and that's just gonna and that's not their goal, but people are gonna be like, ooh, well this place cares about me, like this, that, and that. So and before we go into um our twenty twenty things, I don't think we got yeah, Renee. Renee's having a baby. Um, obviously, Cody and Brandy are having a baby. Seth Rollins and Becky just had their child. Uh, Renee made a comment saying, man, the class of 20-whatever in wrestling is going to be very stacked if all those kids go into the wrestling business. For real. Absolutely. freaking lately Don't know if all of them will. I'm sure one of them one of them will, or maybe two, but we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, 2020 is over. Let's get into these best and worst of 2020. And our first one is the best segment of 2020. Jacob, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, my favorite segment. Oh, I would probably have to say the Pat McAfee, Adam Cole mm. build up. The one. Uh, the the moment where Pat, um, punt kicked Adam Cole when he was laid over the table, which set off the the, the greatest run of twenty twenty in my opinion. I would have to say that was probably my favorite segment going into it. That one was about to be my favorite segment, but I had to really look throughout the whole year of 2020. I had to go back to the time where there were fans. And my favorite, my best segment of 2020, January 13th, 2020, Brock Lesnar and R-Truth. Oh, God. That is my Oh, that's a good one. That is my best segment. <laughs> We've never seen Brock Lesnar break character like that. And he couldn't control his laughter because R Truth was just phenomenal. R Truth's been interviewed multiple times. You're like the only person to get Brock to break, and no one knew what to do. And when he said, Oh, I'm throwing you out, Paul Heyman, and Brock just burst out laughing. And then he's like, I'm not in the rumble. Brock Lesnar is. And then when R2 said what we all say, it's like, hey, man, it's hard. You talk a lot. I, 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 I was just watching that. That is, my, that is my best segment of 2020. And even though my that, the other one I was going to pick didn't happen in WWE ring, it was the buildup when Adam Cole showed up on Pat McAfee's show. That's my number two. But Brock Lesnar, R2, yeah. it was right in January. It was the time before fans disappeared. Things were crazy. That was my favorite segment. Now they had uh I don't know if you knew this or not. They had a bet in the back. Really? To see if our to see if our truth could get Brock to pop in the middle of the ring and break character. I will find there there's an interview somewhere. I forget if it was a podcast or something, but they had but they were talking about it and they our truth's like, "Oh yeah, I, th- I think even Vince was in on it." And he I think like everybody was in on it but Brock. And so like it was like a whole joke like Truths go out there, say whatever, try and get Brock to laugh. So yeah, fun fact about that, that one. That definitely when all truth for all he's done and he's been here for a long time. He goes in the Hall of Fame. That has to be the first thing on his video uh promo. Oh, I think Brock should uh in, uh, induct him. Oh, that'd be that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great. Favorite face. So we're not blurring lines. Favorite face means favorite good guy of two thousand. And 20. And honestly, I'm giving it to Drew McIntyre, not because of his um, him winning the title finally. We all, we all know the old school fans, chosen one, blah, blah, blah. But I'm giving it to him because he was the WWE, he's been the WWE champion most of this pandemic. And he finally got his crowning moment with no fans, and he's been able to act accordingly, uh, be a good leader put on quality matches and he's good. And I think with facing that adversity with no fans and all of that, he is my favorite face of 2020. Um, I, I agree. I have drew down as my, my top face for 2020 because um, I know I say this all the time. I mean, I like the heels better than I do faces. Um, drew is a great face though. I thoroughly enjoy watching drew. And when I think back, you know, 2020 faces you know the and i was like you know and who who who's a who's who's the top face and then like it's like oh it's drew he's the only one i could even like really think of that like just stands out like pandemic edition of wrestling drew synonymous with that and he helped carry raw and he he if they're you know if we had you know if our awards show actually meant anything um he thoroughly deserves the the award for top face of 2020. Hey, when for everything you said. When we get bigger and we're we're doing more and more of these because this is our first end of year one, we can make some little plaques, mail them to them. I see some people do that before with other subjects. So <laughs> I'm down. Get to the rum. Uh, favorite heel. I think both of us are going to have the same thing. I would hope. So I'm going to let you go first. Say that again. I didn't hear you. Favorite heel. I think we both have the same one. I think so. I think I know where you're going. Uh, my favorite heel. <sighs> See, I I did. I don't want to add both of my heel and newcomer 
Oh, I'm pretty sure. So I'm kind of torn on this one. So I'm actually curious. Go with yours first. Oh, it's it's no question. Favorite heel is Pat McAfee. It's not even close. It, it, <laughs> the man gets it. He freaking gets it. Like, he was really starting to piss me off as he got this guy who can't, who's coming from an outsider talking a whole bunch of crap. And he gets it, man. And he was also my favorite. Is also my favorite newcomer. So, dude's an asshole, and he did it so well from the show to now. He kept a babe on the show with a brace. Like the guy, he's an asshole, and I think he was the best heel and favorite newcomer. Okay, so like I said, I will agree. I'm just going to, uh, I'll say my newcomer second here. My favorite heel, because like I said, I didn't want to keep them the same, even though. I was completely initially going Pat McAfee across the board on this. Um, favorite heel, Lana. Oh my God. <laughs> Lana is the top heel of 2020. She might not have even been a heel on TV. That being said, <laughs> nobody has pissed you off more. Nobody has caused you to rant as much as Lana. She has been the ultimate heel for you sir so uh lana gets my top spot for top heel of 2020 lot wow for that's 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 wow that's really good because lana yeah she's made me rant more we already know the year she's gone through uh two months straight going through <laughs> tables the third party ban that she will swear she didn't start but it was all her fault her getting a then finally, you got to get a rub and get a title opportunity. Then Flair says, "Yeah, I'm back. So you can sit back." And that's literally what happened. <laughs> I've been off TV since, but yeah, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. So are you going newcomer with Pat Ben? Oh, absolutely. Because Pat McAfee, let's be honest, he is legitimately the best freaking heel in wrestling today. It's not close. You nailed it on the head. He's such a heel. That he turned the most heel faction in Undisputed Era into a face faction. He's that freaking good. Also, as you said, he's an asshole. He plays his part well. And he's he's so freaking good. Pat McAfee's the man. Absolutely. 100%. Not, not even, uh, it's not even a competition, really. Yeah, not, not nothing really at all on that. And then Best all around wrestler. I usually go with the PWI. And with the all around, I actually went John. I went John Moxley. He's been cutting some promos. He's had some matches. I, I did go John Moxley. That's right now. Right now. Wrestling, uh, the promo package, the presentation, the attitude, the swagger. I went John. Yeah. Um, see, I had a, a toss up around here. If Pat would have wrestled a couple more matches, I would have given him this title too, to be completely honest. But I, I tossed back and forth. I was like, is it Moxley? Because it could easily go to him. Is it Cody? Because it could easily go to Cody Rhodes. But I'm going to be a little biased on this one. My favorite all around wrestler of 2020, Bray Wyatt the Fiend. Or should I say, and the Fiend. Because. Drew McIntyre was the face yep. of Raw. Nobody entertained me more than Bray Wyatt this year. Between all the stuff he's done with Alexa Bliss and Braun and Randy and just everything. Um, and then, yes, all the times he's got screwed this year because Bray Wyatt always constantly gets screwed. Everything he did was entertaining. Mm-hmm. So Bray Wyatt gets my top spot for best all around wrestler. He kept me entertained on raw when nobody else could really keep me that entertained. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. I like it. I like it, Brian. Bray's a good thing. You sound like that. Bray's a good thing. Favorite moment of 2020. I'll let you go first on this one. With this one too, it wasn't really hard for me. WrestleMania 37. Were they 37? 37, 36. This past WrestleMania, Otis finally gets Mandy Rose. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. The build up to that was phenomenal. 
it's one of those things that makes me happy but pisses me off at the same time because it shows WWE can make a long story storyline pay off in the right way. And when Otis finally got uh, Mandy Rose and they kissed in the middle of the ring, that was in front of a live audience. That place would have freaking exploded. So that's my favorite moment of 2020. You, you see the, I mean, not to be not to be mean to Otis, but you see the bigger, fat guy, short, not not attractive to most people, get the freaking blonde Omega bombshell in the middle of the ring kissing. Can't beat that. Yeah, that's that's a good one. That that is a very good one. Um, so my favorite moment of 2020 was actually the Thunderdome. Ooh. And I, I would say the Thunderdome because before the Thunderdome, I, I was really just kind of uh, like uh, wrestling without a crowd, without anything. You know, I hated it. I couldn't stand it. It just that crowd is the, the extra man, the extra player on the field that just is entertaining, both good and bad. Um, but it's always a constant. When you lose that constant, it was just it killed me. It just, the product was not the same. I think WWE was smart as hell for doing the Thunderdome. Yes. Michael Cole said Thunderdome way too many times, oh, yeah. but that being said, the Thunderdome changed the game and I, I was happy with it. And plus I, I know a couple people have been on the Thunderdome so far and it's always cool to see like, Oh, Hey, like my kids were on the Thunderdome, you know, tonight, like, Oh, Hey, look for them, you know, wherever you know on so you'll know you know they'll post everything on social media but i mean it's always cool so i i gotta say probably my favorite moment was just the thunderdome just being able to bring back wrestling as much as you possibly could and then it eased up you know over time where AEW actually had a little bit of a crowd nxt has a little bit of a crowd new japan's like screw it we're throwing twenty thousand people in it let's make it happen (laughs) <laughs> like um so yeah that's that's my favorite moment of 2020 okay okay we got favorite match of 2020 you want to go first or you want me to go i will go first on this okay. one my favorite match of 2020 i'm going back to wrestlemania oh. john cena versus what? the fiend i loved that match i know a lot of people hated it i do not care i loved that match it was and i quote such good shit (laughs) that that for being what started i think the trend of like these cinematic matches that was the first and best one in my opinion i liked it better than the undertaker match okay that everything since they went through tina's entire career and the stuff they said i mean it was it was the most edgy product of WWE all year, in opinion. This is, you know, Vince McMahon, this is such good shit. You can look, but you can't touch Nikki, Nikki Bella's stuff. All of it. it. It was great. That was my favorite match of 2020. How about you, buddy? It's funny with the Nikki Bella thing that not that many people actually paid attention to that. On where that, like, not that many, they just glossed over it. Like, yeah, we're going to talk about his failure with Nikki Bella. They showed the theme, like, all the stuff, failures. What if he would have went heel, all the things. No, that's... That's a good. That's a good one. And he and then Bray finally gets revenge for WrestleMania 30. My favorite one. I'm gonna go back all the way to January. NXT Takeover Portland. Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic. That is my favorite match of 2020. Ooh, that's a good. One. That's a really freaking good one. Because I I will never forget that I was actually late coming back for. And everyone in the text messages and my group messages, and you were telling me you gotta watch because I that was the only match I missed. And I was able to watch everything else, and that take, and that takeover as it oh, was really good. You got you got that that was the best match tonight. So I remember waiting for it to be over, then staying up and watching. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that that match was super good. That's when I thought, well, I mean, Keith was just the main event of Raw, but I thought he was gonna have even bigger things when he moved up. I thought that was COVID was gonna have bigger things when he moved up. But those two were just made to wrestle each other. That was that was top notch, top notch. And they should have never went to the main roster. Never should have. Never should have. Poor bastards. <laughs> yeah, it's sad too. You think 
you say going up to the main roster is making it to the big leagues, but for 98% of them, it's a death sentence. Yep. Um, now, before we hop into who needs a big 2021, let's, let's do some. What was your worst, worst moment segment of 2020? Oh, mine's already in my brain. I, I already know. <laughs> oh, third years out. Thanks. I got to think about this um, one. I'm not, I'm going to do the whole storyline. The Mysterio Rollins storyline was the worst. <laughs> and the particular episode is when Aaliyah, after seeing Buddy Murphy beat the hell out of her brother and dad, saying and had the nerve to say to her dad in her face, but dad, I love him. Dad, I almost done. But I gotta watch this stuff. But that was the worst. Segment, moment, storyline, everything of 2020, and it should be burned, and no one should be forced to see that garbage again. That was that was entertaining, at least. Oh, um, at least for at least for me, <laughs> being able to come on here and yeah, we had our the biweekly uh, story update on these two and how it, the never ending saga that was terrible. I gotta say, so what? Probably my least favorite moment. I mean, I could throw out Lana. Lana could be the easy one. Lana, Lana, <laughs> um, Lana's a good one. I mean, her the whole third party ban was twenty twenty. That's her fault. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we. I mean, I could. We could. Ju- I could just say the third party ban was terrible. Thanks, Mister Savior Balls, Mustafa <laughs> Ali. Thanks, Lana. I hate you all dearly. I mean, I I could say, oh, COVID shutting down Mania, you know, but. I got to say probably my, the thing I hated the most I'm going to say is retribution in 2020. You know, I forgot about them because of how irrelevant they were. I honestly thought since we talked about it earlier, I thought you were going to go Goldberg beating Bray Wyatt, Saudi Arabia. Ah, I mean, I, you can easily, there was a lot of crap, (laughs) but there was a lot of crap. I can also say the announcers for WWE. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I could say losing Mauro Ranallo. Yeah, that was. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of different routes you could go down this. Um, but I'm going to say retribution. And the reason being, it's just kind of like we talked about with Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic. Dominic Dijakovic is in retribution along with Mia Yim um, and whoever else is in there. But those two specifically, because that, that group has just destroyed their careers right now has just absolutely destroyed both of them and they deserve so much better both of them because they are both phenomenal wrestlers and they got thrown into this stuff and they're wearing the stupid mask and have the stupid storyline you know i will say this much that was the one thing mon this past monday on legends night that gave me a little bit of hope for retribution was on Raw Talk when Mustafa Ali, I don't know, did you catch that at all? I saw him talking, yep. I mean, him, Mustafa Ali coming out there and talking about, uh, hey, brother, you know, just talking all this smack about Hulk Hogan and everything, and going on about how, well, these guys, you know, they they never got their come up, they, you know, they've gotten treated poorly, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, why, why can't we have this? Because he cut a good promo. I mean, he had moments where I was like, bro, like you gotta, it, I think less is more when he was speaking, but he did have some really good moments. It's like, you know what have made this better is if you were in the ring with Hulk Hogan and you were having a one-on-one with him with retribution surrounding the ring and going on about, oh, I took my vitamins. I, said my prayers. I did what my parents told me, all the you know stuff that Hulk Hogan says. And to turn around and be like, and this is where I'm at. I'm stuck because you keep answering the phone. I mean, you could have done so much stuff with that. So it gave me a little bit of hope. Like, like of course, they dropped the ball. But I'm like, well, one good spark could eventually change retribution. But God... All those guys just suck in retribution, and I bitched about them constantly in 2020. Yeah. So they, they're taking my my top spot for worst worst thing in 2020. That's a good one. And before we go to who needs a big 2021, just other standout things of 2020. Roman finally doing what we've been saying for almost what five seven years, being a heel 
and he's having the best run of his career right now, which is crazy to say that Roman Reigns is having the best run of his career right now, a guy who's headlined WrestleMania four straight times and would have another time if he if it wasn't for cancer and COVID. But Samoan Chief Roman Reigns is really good. Uh, and he, he, he very easily could have got favorite heel yeah. of 2020. Yeah, he easily. I mean, just throw him up there, right up there with Lana, swap him, I care less, you know, it is what yeah. it is. So those, those are some big things. Obviously, AEW doing what they're doing. Uh, about to have a video game soon. Obviously, now at the end, at the end of 2020, Kenny Omega winning, going to TNA. Now TNA and AEW might look in cahoots, and you have New Japan, and we got Ring of Honor. But 2020 ended on some, there were some great moments in 2020, even with COVID. Sting's back. Yeah. We can talk about that. Sting came back in 20, went to back to TNT. Who had that on their bingo card for 2020? No one did. You had Taker having his farewell, hopefully. Hopefully he's not uh, coming back. And you had, a lot of, you had a lot of crazy things. And also, so going into who needs a big 2021? And this could be a lot of people. So there's a couple of names that come to me. One I'm actually looking at her on my screen right now because um, NXT is going on right now. Uh, Rhea Ripley is one person who needs a big 2021 because she had such a humongous 2019 and her 2020 was garbage. Yes. So she is someone who I think needs a big 2021. Another person who I think needs a big 2021, and it's looking like it's trending that way. That's another female. I'm going to go Alexa Bliss. The reason I say Alexa Bliss is that Alexa Bliss is extremely talented. She's a very good talker. She can work. She gets into her roles. She had the thing with Nikki Cross, and now is doing the thing with The Fiend. But when you look at Alexa Bliss in the era that she's in, She's competing and from notoriety wise with the four horsewomen and Asuka. And honestly, if you if you take out like Trish and Lita, Alexa Bliss's era has the five best women wrestlers of all time. She's a five time champ, multi time tag team champ, and she just has the four horsewomen and Asuka, who are the five best women wrestlers probably of all time. And she doesn't get and she hasn't had a main title in a while. So I think she needs to win the title. I'm going to be honest right now. I don't know if I'm going to pick her, but I think her and The Fiend both need to win the Rumble and both come out as champions at WrestleMania. Oh, that'd be great. So Fiend's going, even though Fiend's done well, he needs to get that title back. He needs to be imposing. Those are some other, those are some people. And then there's people I'm not even going to waste my Like Retribution, they're not going to have to be 2021. But Rhea Ripley, Alexa Bliss, The Fiend, those are my big people for 2021 right now. Who are yours? All right. So, like, I kind of had this broke down between, like, male, female, and, like, third person, whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um, for a uh, male wrestler who needs a big 2021, 20, I have Cesaro. But you could have him every year. <laughs> Oh, I, I will take I will take Cesaro every single year. Mm-hmm. We never get it, so I'm hoping this is the year we finally get Cesaro to finally get a main title, even if he just has it for a night. I just I got to see it. He he deserves it. I think he's he he needs he needs a rocket strap. He needs to go to the top. He can do it. Um, you you could easily have him. I mean, is he on Raw or SmackDown right now? I think that's so bad. I don't know. I think it was SmackDown. We was with not more. Right. Uh, I, you could easily do McIntyre versus Cesaro at Mania, and it would sell. You could do Cesaro versus McIntyre at SummerSlam. Wouldn't matter. That was that's a match I want to see because yeah. you know they're just going to tear the house down. Yeah. Um, but he's someone I I want to see who I don't think might have the biggest year, but I think really deserves it is him. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the fiend when he gets back. I would, I mean, I would love to see the fiend and Alexa bliss win at mania, win the titles. You'd see me freak out. I'd be so happy on this podcast. It, it would be next level. The female who I th- think needs a big 2021 
Bianca Belair. Oh, okay. okay. I think she's kind of getting. I. I think they're warming her up, getting ready to send her because I think she could go straight to the top. No problem. Yeah. And yeah. hold that title and be the most legit women's champion you could have right now. She's the like me and you have talked before. She's the one newcomer who I think can end up rivaling the horsewoman. Yeah. And Oscar, she, she has the look. She definitely can wrestle her ass off. Yeah. She's she's the she's the only female wrestler who's not in those top slots, and I'm excluding Alexa Bliss here right now. That could run as champion and be legit as hell. So, um, who else needs a big 2021? Um, this is kind of like who I think needs the absolute most help. The entire AEW women's, women's division. division, because it is hot garbage. <laughs> it is freaking terrible. It is so freaking bad. That is trash. Absolute trash. They should be ashamed of that division, the way they built it, the way they have done it. It is freaking horrible. For the love of God, fix that division and make it better. You have the talent. You can do it. But whatever the hell they're doing, obviously, isn't working. You, you, you need... I, I think uh, as a podcast or two ago, you nailed it on the head. Take Tony Khan needs to just open up that wallet. Needs to get Tessa. It needs to go out to Chicago and try and get AJ. Just don't just dump the money. You need, you need two big names. I mean, if you could get AJ, it, it'd be, a, it'd be a complete life changer for AEW. Both financially, because they're not going to be able to afford a single person after her. But you're going to be able to elevate all your female wrestlers and establish them for future stars. So that's who needs a freaking big 2021. Is that women's division? That's terrible garbage. You know, it's crazy too, because two weeks from now, and we, two weeks from now, we're just going to tell it's, it's going to be all Royal Rumble. We're going to be talking Rumble like crazy, breaking it down, what we think is going to happen. And Rumble is always. Something where anything can happen. Can you imagine if Triple H, because you brought her name up, Triple H gets Jay White and Tessa? Whoo! If Te- I mean, if Tessa goes to WWE, does she go NXT or does she go main roster? NXT. And she'll become champion. She'll, depending on how this goes, she'll be the one who beats Io Shirai. Yup. Yup. Um, but if she goes to main roster, I just see Jay White going NXT Can, too. I could. I I I'd hope he's staying in NXT. I wouldn't want to see him be in the main roster, yeah. unless by a miracle he got that AJ Styles treatment. Yeah, that he because yeah, that, I I mean, oh the rumbles. I mean, once like you said here in like a couple of weeks we're gonna do. I figure we'll probably do a prediction show and do an after show yeah. of the rumble, and it's gonna be. Oh, that'll be a good old time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm already thinking about what date to record for the Rumble preview so that we have that day completely open and that we can maybe get some other people on here like Justin and hear his hear what he thinks about what's going to happen. I can't give my full Rumble predictions because I don't know. I don't. I can't have people know if I'm picking. I kind of need to retain my picks though. So, <laughs> but nah, man. But yeah, I mean that, that's something else, Justin. This is the one podcast he likes to listen to. <laughs> Shout out to Justin. You're the man. You fix all my edits because my phone constantly drops out. But hey, man. Shout out to Justin. Yeah. No. Yeah, I agree with all the people you said. And again, like I said, they, the women's the only. This is the biggest free agent right now. She's still not signed. That means her baggage must. It's either they're keeping it on the rap raps that she is signed somewhere or her baggage is really that bad of all the rumors that we've read about you know and someone else and i think we forgot to talk about when we talked about getting tessa and getting aj on a few podcasts ago someone else AEW could get that would be a big a big um i don't i don't want to say a big name i mean for them it'd be a big name but in general a lot of people don't know her would be uh kelly klein the former ring of honor women's champion okay yeah yeah i mean to be honest, Jacob, anyone of any notoriety would be big for AEW women's division. 
not, not yes. like the Britt Baker and all of them, but and um, Tay Cotty and Abe. Like, no offense, but you need some bigger names to get those casuals. Yep. Yeah, you you need something, and it's and no offense to to Tay Nar uh, to Tay Conti. That was a huge signing for them, and she wasn't even that popular in WWE. No, it's. Or an NXT. Speaking of someone who was in WWE NXT who wasn't that popular, but she's over there being the uh, Impact champion. But maybe you could have her pull up and wrestle and do things on TNA. I mean, on uh, AW. Deanna Prazo? Yeah. Very well. Or or get Jordan Grace. Or get Jordan Grace, yeah. Anything. For the love of God, do something, AEW. If you, I, I know you're listening. Just just do something with your life and just fix the women's division, please. One big signing can change everything because then you open it up for a whole bunch of matchup. But man, that's that's all we had for right now. Jacob, is there anything else you want to hit on first podcast of twenty twenty one? Thank you to all the listeners once again for I was tied for number one with Chelsea. Um, who sounds like one of the nicest people ever, by the way. So, you know, I'm glad I'm glad she me and her are tied for number one. Um, so, man, y'all just thank you to everyone who's listening. I appreciate it. I know it's all Americans. Um, <laughs> I know my people. I like to try and keep y'all happy. <laughs> um, apparently, our, you know, if you didn't listen to the end of the year podcast uh, with all the, all the Level 7 crew guys and girls, um, definitely go listen to that. Um, Watch me on YouTube because apparently Mitch doesn't think I have enough views on YouTube or something. <laughs> I care less. You just get me these views on Anchor and we're good people. But uh, no, I, right now, because coming up, I mean, it's just all going to be Rumble stuff because that's where that's all I want to talk about now. Now that Wrestle Kingdom's over, it's all Royal Rumble Mania season. So we just got to wait to talk about that stuff coming up till the next episode. Yeah. Again, just thank you to everyone who listens on any platform you listen to. And it's January. As I say sometimes, this is when, especially WWE, they start to try a little bit. Because Monday Night Football's over and you're going into WrestleMania season, going into the Rumble. The Rumble establishes so much for basically your whole year's worth of storylines, barring any injuries. So I'm excited. I love the Royal Rumble. It's my favorite pay-per-view. It's the last Sunday of January, and I'm pumped. This is one right now with the current champions. I really don't know who's going to win, and that makes it super exciting with the Royal Rumble because you have no idea if it's going to be someone who's on the roster now or if it's someone who comes back. Is an NXT call-up who wins? Like, this is a great January from now to basically August is the best time to be a wrestling fan. Yeah. 100 percent this is this is our time of year people it's cold outside we don't even like to go outside anyways we like to stay at home in our basements <laughs> <laughs> it's our time to shine people yeah, in the old days you stay at home in your basement you're watching all the dirt cheap now it's you're in your basement you're going through social media seeing everyone talk trash about <laughs> each other and rumble, and rumble sees it's heating up guys you got Lacey Evans call, telling uh, Charlotte Flair to kiss her stepmom, saying Lacey's going to be her stepmom. And you have Lacey Evans having a Twitter beef with Cardi B. Like, Rumble is picking up. That's, that's not, that's not, and Lacey's being smart doing that. I'm not going to lie, because now she's getting people who don't know who Lacey Evans is to look her up, boasting up her brand so that she could get a push. That's what you want to do during WrestleMania season. That's what you want to do. Big brain Big move. Brain, but. With that being said, thank you guys for listening to the L7C podcast. First one of 2021. We're going to be back in a couple of weeks previewing that Royal Rumble. Hopefully we get some Justin, maybe some others on there to hear what they think should happen. And we'll go. For- anyone but Patrick. Any- anyone but Patrick. But thank you guys for listening. <laughs> you guys- <laughs> thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.